page 68 taps at the top of the page they're introducing you to what they call an upbeat or a pickup note I'll just give you the spiel of it so you understand what's the whole thing the idea is that according to the time signature every measure has to have a certain number of beats in it that's that's just the way it is that's the way it's put together not my idea they did it sometimes they don't want a piece of music to start on beat one they want it to start on one of the other beats well they could give it a full measure and just put rests in there and then you come in when you come in but instead they've done this pickup beat thing and all it is is they take usually not always usually they take the last measure of the piece and they chop it they split it and the end of that measure they put at the beginning so if you take the pickup measure and the last measure and put them together you still come up with the total number of beats according to the time signature so this is in 4-4 time if, if you look at the pickup measure it's got two eighth notes in it which is equal to one quarter note which is equal to one beat well if you look at the last measure it has a dotted half note in it and that's equal to three quarter notes or three beats and if you put them together you get the four beats total and that's what they're after so the pickup beat or an upbeat could be called a pickup measure. Uh, could be called an anacrusis. A good, whatever, it doesn't matter what you call it. The point is we're not coming in on beat one. In this case, we're coming in on beat four. So it'd be one, two, three, four, and one type of thing. That's how pickup beats or pickup measures work. It keeps saying a beat because this example just has one beat. I prefer a pickup measure because that could be any, any number of beats. As long as it's not a full measure, there could be any number. So whatever. So let's just go over this. First, let's get the notes in the fingering first. Four taps. It's four, four time. Let's, I'm going to take both hands together here. And let's get the notes in the fingering first. So we're starting out in the left hand on third finger is on those G's so that puts the left hand here the right hand is thumb on a metal C and that puts the right hand here so we're here and so it's two G's and a C and then going on we have a G and a C and an E and then a G C E well that's going to repeat G C E G C E yay last measure the left hand has to come down and you have the full measure to do this in you just come down here in C position because you have a C an E and a G that, that chord it's a C chord and you're going to stay there for the rest of it so the last G's you'll play with your thumb and once you got a handle on all that then we put the rhythm in well because it has a pickup beat we're coming in on beat four so it's four and one, four and one, two, three, four and one, two, three, four and one, two and three and four and one. And I don't always say an and when I don't need it because I'm lazy and so it is. I mean, after a while, you don't need to say the end at all. You just know there's two beats in there, so I could go four, one, two, three, four. And I just know there's two eighth notes in it. Whichever, it's a personal thing. Then we go back and we add the articulation. Here it's just slurs. You're connecting. And then lift up before you play the next G, lift up. So there's just a little silence. And then again, lift up. Lift up between each. So there's just a little bit of silence in there. That's really the only articulation there is. Then we add the dynamics. It starts out mezzo piano or medium soft, moderately soft, sort of soft, a little on the soft side. You have to decide what that is. It's not as soft as soft, but it's not loud either. And it stays there until the last line. Now you go up to moderately loud. Moderately loud and moderately soft are close to each other. So you just go up a little bit. It's not loud. It's just on, a little on the loud side. That's, and it's the G, right hand. Keep this chord soft if you can. Just light, nice and light. We want to hear the G. Until you get to the G in the left hand. Now that's melody, so you bring that out. And you see the decrescendo back to soft. So each of these notes, 
you're gonna get a little softer. You have to decide and you practice that, just go down to soft. So you haven't been soft at all in the piece until now. So this is softer than you were at the beginning. This is soft. Not a lot going, it's just basically these notes. Pretty much, huh? It's like a bugle player or trumpet player. Speed wise, you can, you've heard, you can find recordings of taps. You know, they're usually played at funerals or something. It's a sad song. It's a, it's a, at the end of the day, when the day is over, you find it's just a fairly, it's a slow piece. But let's play it together slowly and double check the notes and the rhythms. Not going to do the dynamics. So I'll give us three counts because we come in on beat four. One, ready and go, and. One, two, three, and. Two, three, and. There's a duet at the bottom of the page for this. I'd like to play that and you can play what you just played. But I'm going to need you to go up an octave again. So just pretend middle C goes up here. And instead of here to start, you're up here to start. Up here. I'll give us three counts and then we'll come in. Now the duet part doesn't have anything on your pickup. These two G's. So I'm going to play those down here with you and then I'll play the duet part. So three counts and here we go. One, ready and go and. <laughs> 